Metropolis is known as the home of Superman, but copyright questions are putting some folks there on superhero patrol. Members of the Chamber of Commerce there are keeping tabs on folks using the Man of Steel's name around the city. Their job is to keep the copyrighted superhero from unauthorized use. We can use Superman here, you know, in our events and promotions, but we have to stay within the guidelines. City officials are paying extra attention to the guidelines after a recent trip to New York City. There they met with DC Comics. They're the ones with the license that lets Metropolis celebrate their favorite son. Illinois' World Championship Fishing Competition wrapped up today at Wren Lake. The three-day event not only drew professional anglers to southern Illinois, but thousands of fishing enthusiasts. That means good news for local businesses. For example, all 90 rooms at Wren Lake Resort are fully booked this weekend. It wasn't enough to accommodate the 15,000 spectators who watched the competition. And at this Whittington gas station, attendant Tom Ortner says he had seen he has seen a 30% increase in business. Well, I've been standing here since 7 a.m., and this is all I've been doing, is taking money and taking care of customers. Business owners say this weekend's fishing competition brought in between 8 and $12 million to the local economy. Since this competition is nationally televised, they hope the beautiful waters of Wren Lake will lure millions of others to vacation here. If they don't get their way, the teachers of Benton High School will go on strike as early as the first day of August, or excuse me, August 18th. Negotiators say the school board and the teachers will probably agree on a contract before then. But as News 3's Tatum Wan reports, this uncertainty leaves students scared for their academic futures. The football field and the classrooms of Benton High School will stay empty if teachers and staff members decide to strike. That's something senior Lacey Morris says she doesn't want to happen. If they decide to go on strike, it could put us months or even a year just back. Morris says she's working at this fast food restaurant to save up for college. She says she doesn't want to throw all her hard work away. I think they should compromise and look at it from the kids' perspective. I have six years of college ahead of me, so I kind of want to start as soon as I can. The 55 teachers and staff members of Benton High School are asking the school board for higher salary. School board president Mark Miner, who is also a negotiator, says both sides cannot agree on the amount. So a federal mediator is stepping in. Students get hurt the most, there's no doubt about that. Uh, that's always the case, but uh, we think that uh, through, the, you know, through the process we'll be able to uh, get the, uh, the teachers what they need. Last year, teachers walked the picket line for a day when negotiations broke down. But an agreement was reached the night before the first day of school. That's what Lacey Morris is hoping for, to finish her senior year without any setbacks. Yeah. In Benton, Tatum 1, News 3. And now an update on the election controversy in Alexander County. As you may know, there have been allegations of vote buying there. In the March primary, Sharon McGinnis narrowly beat Susan Heilman in the race for Alexander County Circuit Clerk. Heilman sued, saying the results were not accurate because of possible vote buying. Meanwhile, McGinnis is appealing a prior court decision that ordered a new election. Now, a date for oral arguments is set for September 7th. A road closing in Carbondale to pass along to you. Starting tomorrow, East Green Street will be closed. If you normally travel that way, you must find another route. The project is expected to continue through the current construction season. And as we reported earlier, a potentially dead, deadly discovery in the Shawnee Forest has two sides of a complicated issue pointing fingers at each other. Tonight, News 3's Lindsay Nelson reports. It appears to be about 50-pound test. For a biker or ATV rider, it could be deadly. A fish wire booby trap hanging between two trees. But it was definitely meant neck high. When the president of the Shawnee Trail Conservancy went to check it out, he discovered six traps in the Burke Branch area of the Shawnee National Forest. And uh, it was obviously put there and designed and put there to hurt someone. But just who strung up the wire or why is still a mystery. One that's leaving two groups whose paths have crossed in the past, clashing over recreational use of the Shawnee, pointing the finger at each other. The debate between the Shawnee Trail Conservancy and another group called the Regional Association of Concerned Environmentalists, or RACE, continues. But obviously there are certain key people 
uh, that we call uh, environmentalists or, or, or tree huggers or whatever you want to call them, but to that extent we also wish that they would appeal to their group and their constituents to not go to these measures. I, I, I was a little bit upset that uh, uh, Mr. Schmidt and the Shawnee Trail Conservancy continue to uh, say that we're anti-recreation and that, that's not true. While both groups are divided on using the Shawnee, they agree on one thing. The wire traps are a dangerous way to draw attention to the issues. Uh, it's wrongful and it's dangerous and uh, nobody should be involved in that. We don't condone it. We never have. We never will. Lindsay Nelson, News 3. Workers are putting the finishing touches on the inside of the Staples Center with the Democratic National Convention less than 24 hours away. Kimberly Plummer has the story. The Secret Service brought specially trained bomb-sniffing dogs into the Staples Arena today to secure the podium area for tomorrow's start of the Democratic National Convention. <laughs> Crews are still drilling away to set the stage, climbing ladders to position cameras to capture the event live, and painting the last and final touches on the podium. Technical crews spent the day testing the lights and the sound system in the arena. <laughs> The Angel City Chorale was tuning its collective voice in preparation for their big performance, and network anchors are now in town on the convention floor, getting ready for a week of broadcasts from Los Angeles. Even Mayor Richard Reardon himself checked out the progress of preparations for what is the biggest event L.A. has hosted since the Summer Olympics in 1984. And this morning, political pundits made their rounds on network news shows. I asked Jesse Jackson his opinion of the challenges facing Al Gore's running mate, Joseph Lieberman. The real challenge for Senator Lieberman is not just to address the black Jewish issue, but the Catholics uh, and the Protestants who have these religious anxieties about his capacity to be fair, he can be fair. This is Kimberly Plummer reporting. Ford Motor Company says most of the company's problem tires were made at a Firestone plant in Decatur during a strike of United Rubber Workers. Ford says it conducted an analysis to pin down where the faulty tires were made. The problems are now under government scrutiny to determine whether they factored in hundreds of crashes that caused at least 46 deaths. 6.5 million tires are being recalled. A Ford spokesman says the number of reported problems jumped in Decatur in 1994, a time in which the plant was in a 10-month-old strike and was operating with replacement workers. Bridgestone Firestone says the strike, which ended in early 1995, had nothing to do with the problems. One person is dead and four others hurt after being hit by lightning at a campground in Wisconsin. The Apple River campgrounds are about three miles away from the Ozfest Music Festival. The bolt of lightning apparently hit a group of men walking and knocked other campers off their feet. Hey, I was down by my tent and I got blown off. Just rolled over and I got stood up and I was like, oh my God, what happened? I think I got hit by lightning. One of the campers who happened to be medically trained helped perform CPR on the people who were struck. When News 3 continues, the weekend closes on a nice note. Jude will have your forecast straight ahead on News 3.